Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at uh, ISV East as uh, we have topology in front of us. So the, we're going to look to configure the ultimate goal is to configure VPLS. But let's just first of all take a look at uh, the setup. So we have ISP East here as running IGP as OSPF and area zero. And in terms of devices, we have PE1, PE2, PE3 and 4 and one RR and one P device. So I've mixed up um, in this um, topology one RR and one P just to demonstrate the various functionalities. Uh, this may not be the ideal setup in terms of design, but the idea here today is to demonstrate uh, some of the functions of technologies that we're looking in this series. So we're using uh, ASR 1000, that's uh, CSR 1000V in ISP East uh, and uh, for the CE devices, we're using regular iOS. The OSPF in this topology is already configured in the area zero. And uh, we also have LDP configured and the BGP is also configured. Um, we're using RR in this case and PE1, 2, 3 and 4 are pairing with route reflector RR in this topology. So BGP, IGP and LDP is up in this topology. And our next task is to go ahead and look at uh, VPLS in this uh, case today where we have two CE sites as a uh, Libami 1, CE 1 and 2. And we're going to look to configure a BGP um, auto discovery for the VPLS today. So basically auto discovery enables each uh, PE um, to discover the VPLS um, uh, using auto discovery and auto discovery tracks the PE devices when they are added or removed from the VPLS domain and auto discovery and signaling function use the uh, BGP to, uh, to find the, the, the PE devices. So idea here is, today is that uh, CE1 and CE2 are um, connected like they are directly connected over the MPLS core across the MPLS core. So when um, we configure a layer 3 IP address or we want to form an adjacency between uh, CE1 and CE2, uh, they have the uh, layer 2 service across the MPLS core. So today we're going to go through various functions of uh, config and verification in the um, in this topology using uh, VPLS uh, and BGP auto discovery. And uh, finally, we're going to this is going to be two part um, uh, videos. We're going to start with the first video and configure uh, the VPLS in the CEs and then PEs. And then we're going to continue continue on in the second one second video to complete the uh, verification and see the results and dive a little bit more deeper into the verification uh, of the VPLS in Cisco iOS and iOS XC. So we have in this case uh, two edge devices PE2 and PE4 and they're going to be configured for the auto discovery uh, using BGP. And first of all, we're going to jump on to the PE and take a look at the review some of the BGP configs that that is pre configured for the guys who've uh, not used to the um, uh, the address families, uh, various address families that are used. We typically we use address family IPv4 and VPN v4. So we're going to be using address family uh, layer to VPN here and using VPLS. So before we start the configs on the CE, we're going to first of all jump on to uh, the PEs and quickly take a look at uh, existing config of the BGP. So here we see that we have a BGP configuration on uh, the PE2 and it is using RR um, as 11.0.0.5 and it's a typically a normal BGP config we're using a process of 300 we're using router ID and uh, and then we're using activating and uh, the pairing with the uh, IBGP pairing with 11.0.0.5 uh, and remote as is 300 so it's IBGP pairing with the route reflector that is the loopback IP address of uh, RR. 
The additional thing I just want to uh, point out here that we're using address family layer to VPN VPLS and that is the address um, AFI that is going to carry our layer to routes today across between the PEs and we're suppressing the LDP signaling here to ensure that uh, BGP is used for auto discovery. So let's quickly jump on to uh, the other PE, Edge PE, which is a uh, PE4 to just to verify the config. Similarly, we have the BGP process running. We have the IPv4 and VPN v4 address family activated for our future tasks. And we have uh, L2 VPN VPLS active with the RR, which is 11.0.0.5. And we're sending extended community as a part of the uh, BGP uh, address family. And we're suppressing the LDP uh, for uh, be because we're going to use the uh, BGP auto discovery. So let's first of all uh, complete the config on the CEs. As a part of the config, let's configure IP address on the CE1 as per topology. And we're going to go into the CE1's interface directly connected to the PE2, and that is gig 00. We're going to then assign IP address of 192.168.3.11 slash 24 and we're going to unshut the interface and write the config and next we're going to jump on to CE2 and configure the IP address on the directly connected interface to the PE and the IP is going to be 192.168.3.22 slash 24 for the CE2 just going to write the config, unshut the interface and write the config. To start the config on the PE, and we're going to start with the PE2. So first of all, we're going to go under the config and define the layer to router ID for the PE. And that is going to be the loopback IP address of the PE2, that is 11.0.0.2. To start the process for the VPLS config in iOS XE, so we start with a layer 2 VPN, VFI, context, and name of the context and we're going to give it a name that is the VRF name. And then we're going to define the VPN ID. That is the ID of this uh, multi-point VPN. We just call it 300 in this case. And then we're going to define the auto discovery as BGP and signaling as BGP as well. Next is the VE ID. VE ID identifies the VPLS endpoint ID. And then we're going to define the VE range and set a route target. We're going to set it at 300 colon 100. So we're going to come out of the uh, VFI config and going to define a bridge domain. A bridge domain which is building block for the multipoint uh, VPNs uh, over the PE routers. So we're going to define the member interface on this PE that is part of the bridge domain and in this case it is the gig 3. So this is a directly connected interface to CE2. So that is going to be the member of a bridge domain that we've just created. And then we're going to set the, uh, the type that is going to be the uh, instance type. Uh, sorry, service instance, and we're just going to give it a, a number. Then we're going to set the virtual forwarding instance as a member for this bridge domain. And uh, the, the VFI name is the VRF name in this case. And finally, we're going to go under the interface that connects to the CE, and that is gig3. We're going to define the service instance that we created above, and that is 99 and define the type that is Ethernet and set the encapsulation to default. In this case, we're just gonna set it to default so the any VLAN tag, tag that received is accepted. 
So just to recap the config again. Let's recap the config. We have a layer 2 VPN, a VFI virtual forwarding instance, and the name is um, Libami. Then we have the VPN ID. That's the ID number for this VPN. In this case, we've called it 300. Next, we've set the BGP as auto discovery and signaling as BGP as well. The VE ID is VPLS endpoint ID that identifies a v VFI within the v um, VPLS network. So that's a VE ID and next is the VE range that specifies the VE device ID range. So we can set a you know, significant number. We set the uh, route target in, in this case, um, export and import and we set it to 300 colon 100. So once we set the layer to um, a VFI context, the next we're going to go ahead and configure a bridge domain. The bridge domain essentially it's, it's the building block for the uh, multi-point uh, bridging. It present on HPE. So we're going to, um, under the bridge domain, we're going to set the interface and create a service instance for this particular instance. And we're going to then bind the VFI that we created above earlier in this task under the bridge domain. So essentially the access connections to the bridge domain on the PE router are called attachment circuit. So basically we are connecting the attachment circuit inside the bridge domain. So make, making it into a sort of a building block for this, uh, this VPLS. So in the final task, we're going to associate the service instance under the interface that is directly connected to the CE and set the encapsulation type. And we're going to continue configuring this VPLS into the next video. And I look forward to see you in the next video where we're going to go ahead and complete our task of VPLS. Thank you.